emojis for the books I chose were. Oh. <laughs> It's Jay and today I'm here with my Emojiathon week one wrap up video. I actually read a total of seven books during week one so I thought I would wrap them up for y'all so that my end of the month wrap up isn't a thousand years long. So without further ado, let us get started. So if you are unaware, the Emojiathon is a month long readathon that myself and three other people host. I'll leave the link down to my announcement video down below if you guys want further information on it. But basically you link emojis to a certain challenge and you want to try to complete the bingo board that Spencer so graciously made. So this is my bingo board as of week one of Emojiathon. As you can see I've already crossed off eight boxes because one of the boxes is the grape emoji which is my emoji which is to read vinyl by Sophia Elaine Hansen. Obviously since it's my book I've read it before so I just crossed that off right away. I thought I would wrap up the other seven emojis that I completed for week one. So the first emoji that I completed was the snowflake emoji which is to read a book that takes place during the winter and I read Gilded Cages by Vic James. This book takes place in a society where equals who are very powerful aristocrats have these magical abilities that they call skills. Those born without these skills are called the unequals and they have to give 10 years of their lives to the slave days where they basically are slaves to the equals. The Hadleys, who are a ordinary family from Great Britain, decide that they're going to start their slave days together as a family, so they're sent off to serve the Jardins, who are the most elite group of equals in Great Britain. So when Luke is separated from his family and sent to one of the worst slave towns in Great Britain, him and a bunch of other slaves decide that they are going to start an uprising against the whole slave day concept. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. I thought it was so unique and so well done. I was instantly hooked from the very first chapter. It's both action-packed and very suspenseful at the same time. I was instantly invested in literally every single character in this book from the Jardins to the Hadleys to everybody in between. The book is told from so many different points of view. Every chapter is somebody else telling the story but it was so interesting to see into every single character's minds. It was just so well done. The biggest complaint that I have about the book was the romance. It seemed to come out of nowhere and I didn't really think there was a point of it. I'm going to guess that it makes more sense if in the second book which I really want to find a copy of but overall super action-packed super suspenseful definitely recommend you guys check this one out the next emoji I completed on the bingo board was the world emoji and that is to read a book that takes place somewhere else than where you live so I chose lost and found by Brooke Davis this takes place in Australia so I clearly do not live in Australia. I live in Canada. The book follows seven-year-old Millie whose mother ends up leaving her in a department store after her father's death and she just never returns and that's when she meets two old people, one named Carl the typist and one named Agatha and they set off on this huge adventure across Australia to try to find Millie's mother. I ended up giving it a three out of five stars. It was very cute, very quick read but it wasn't anything that's going to stick in my mind for a very long time. Each character is very unique in their own way and is told in alternating perspectives throughout the entire thing among the three main characters. I personally loved Millie the most. I thought she was just so adorable and just the way she interacted with everybody was just so lovable and I just loved her a lot. Carl was definitely a close second. Agatha kind of bothered me in the long run. She got on my nerves very quickly. I really liked how the relationship between the three main characters grew and developed throughout the story. I was a bit disappointed with the ending. I think it was very rushed and it just was very abrupt. I think that it could have definitely been flushed out a bit more, but overall it was a cute story, so. The next book that I read was Falls the Shadow by Stephanie Gaither and this was for the tree emoji which is to read a book that takes place outside. This book follows Caitlin Benson who was very close with her sister Violet when they were younger but then Violet dies suddenly and then two hours after her funeral she's replaced by her clone. The new Violet is genetically identical to 
the old Violet and she shares her memories but she has very subtle differences that Caitlyn can't help but notice. So when the news that the most popular girl in school has been murdered and fingers start pointing towards Violet, Caitlyn decides to team up with her crush in order to find her sister and clear her name before it's too late. I think that the book was very slow paced for me personally. It took a very long time for anything to actually happen and then when the action did occur it was very very quick and then it went back to the boring plot line and I just wasn't for it. I also didn't really connect to any of the characters. I didn't care about what happened to Caitlyn or Jackson. I honestly just wish that there was more Seth who is Jackson's best friend. He was a great comic relief to the story but other than that I just didn't care about any of the characters at all. Again this was a quick and easy read but nothing memorable in my opinion. The next emoji that I crossed off was the fist emoji which is read a book about a social justice movement. So I read The Hate List by Jennifer Brown and this is about a school shooting. It takes place five months after Valerie's boyfriend, Nick, shoots up the school cafeteria, leaving a lot of people injured or killed. People believe that Valerie is also to blame for the shooting after a list of names is discovered by the police which include the victims' names and these people were people who judged and ridiculed and basically made Valerie and Nick's life miserable. So now she needs to face her senior year of high school alone while trying to balance her crumbling social and family lives. So I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think it is such an important read and it is done in such a an amazing way. It was definitely hard to read. From the very first page I was instantly hooked. I cared so much for Valerie and I just wanted her to be okay. The writing style was so easy to read. I flew through this book and it's pretty big honestly but it was done so well. The way that the author used the past and present to tell the story and bring it all together was executed so so well. I also found that every single character was so relatable no matter how they were feeling about Valerie and the shooting and what happened that day. I think that all of their feelings were justified and explained very well. I really liked how the book showed how different people's experiences of traumatic events are and how they handle them differently. It was just really interesting to see into the mind of somebody who was so extremely close to the shooter but then also be able to see the point of view from people who weren't very close to the shooter. I also want to mention that this book made me cry and I do not cry at books ever so the fact that I cried at the ending made this book so much better for me. I also think that the mental health representation and the way that treatment is portrayed in this book was amazing. The psychiatrist was done so well and I loved the relationship that he had with Valerie. I also really loved the character development of Valerie. It was amazing seeing her grow and change throughout the story. I honestly just think this book is so important and I highly recommend you pick it up. I think that it is definitely very relevant with what's going on in the world right now and it was just so perfectly executed so definitely check it out if you get the chance. The next emoji that I crossed off was the pride flag and that is to read a book with a diverse cast and I chose this is kind of an epic love story by Kieran Callender and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this book follows 16 year old Nathan who shies away from relationships to avoid further heartbreak after his ex-girlfriend and best friend Flo breaks up with him. He hasn't seen his childhood best friend Oliver James Hernandez for five years so he is very surprised when he shows up one day at the old house that he used to live in. After spending more time with Oliver James James, Nathan quickly realizes that his feelings never really left. He has to decide whether or not he is going to open himself up to further heartbreak in order to get a chance at his own happily ever after. This book is adorable. It reads so quickly. It's basically a rom-com in book format. It has an amazing diverse cast. There's two queer people of color. There's also a deaf main character. The characters are also related 
relatable and lovable and you can't help but root for them. I will say Nathan kind of pissed me off for the most part. Things that he said towards his family and friends were just downright nasty and you would think that his character would develop and he'd understand that he probably shouldn't be saying those things to people. But every time he would feel bad for a little while, he'd apologize and then he'd say something equally nasty and it just got to the point where I was like, can you please learn? from your mistakes, sir. Ollie was adorable and just such a pure little cinnamon roll and I wanted to protect him at all costs and personally I think that he deserved a lot better than Nathan but it's fine, we'll go with it. I can't say that I like the relationship between Ollie and Nate because most of the book was just them ignoring each other and fighting so it probably wasn't the most healthy but I mean they are only 16 so it kind of makes sense. I really didn't like Flo she was a bitch, honestly. She just spent the entire book just leading Nate on and I just was not here for it. One huge plus of this book was the frequent use of sign language. I think that it was a great inclusion to the story and you really got a feel for the characters through it. Overall, super cute, super fluffy, and great for rom-com lovers. So if you're into that shit, pick it up. The next emoji that I crossed off was the heart emoji that's like beating and that is to read a book from a favorite author so I chose Twisted by Lori Hulse Anderson. She wrote Speak which is one of my favorite books. I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. It follows Tyler Miller who after being caught graffitiing the school during summer vacation he's given six months probation of heavy working and hard labor. This slowly transforms him from the invisible nerd boy into this semi bad boy hunk. This catches the attention of his crush Bethany Milber. Unfortunately for Tyler, Bethany is his father's boss's daughter and the twin sister of his arch nemesis Chip. So as the school year progresses, Tyler's life drastically changes while he tries to balance his overbearing father, his schoolwork, and his crush on Bethany. I always love what Lori Hulse Anderson writes. I think that her writing is incredible and she's just such a talented author. I think that she has a way of just sucking you in from the very first page. The way that she gets her message across is just so effective every time she writes a book. I just think that Tyler is such a great character and you really sympathize with him throughout the entire story and you just want things to get better for him. I just think that Lori Hulse Anderson is such an incredible writer. Like I said before, I just think that she has a way of writing very serious moments but also very light-hearted moments and being able to tie it together to get her message across so effectively. I just personally love her as a writer so I definitely think that you guys should read her books if you get the chance. And then the final emoji that I crossed off was the headphones emoji and that is to listen to an audiobook. So I ended up reading The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid and I absolutely loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Nemesis who is the diabolic for Sidonia, who is a galactic senator's daughter. Basically, a diabolic is a warrior that is breeded to protect the one they are bonded to. So when Sidonia's father angers the emperor and he decides that he is going to take Sidonia as hostage, the family decides to send Nemesis in her place to impersonate her. So when talk of an uprising against the emperor comes to light, Nemesis needs to decide who she can trust and fight along with in order to keep herself and Sidonia safe. I loved this storyline and the whole concept of the Diabolics. I thought it was so interesting. From the very beginning, I was instantly hooked on the characters and the plot and I needed to know what was going to happen next. I think that the world building was so well done. I loved the politics in the book and the family dynamics and how messed up everything was. I just found this book to be so entertaining. I really liked the two main characters. I think that Nemesis was very well done. It was very interesting to see her battle with herself and her humanity because she's not supposed to have any. I also think that it was really interesting to see how she grew and changed throughout the story. I also really loved Tyrus. He was such a great addition to the story and 
it was really cool to see how smart he actually was. I did think that the romance was a little weird, but I still really liked it. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I loved the mind games and trying to figure out who I could trust and who I was rooting for and who I wanted to have their downfall. I just think that it was a really well done book. I'm definitely intrigued by the story and I definitely want to pick up the second book in the trilogy as soon as possible and I highly recommend listening to the audiobook of this because the nerve. All right guys, so those were the first seven books that I read for week one of Emojiathon. I hope you guys are all participating and having a great time. Let me know down below if you are participating and what you've read so far for week one and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!